I want to thank Audible for sponsoring this review. And if you don't know, Audible is the best platform out there when it comes to audiobooks, podcasts, guided meditation, and even sleep sounds. Got all sorts of stuff on their platform. And right now, if you go to audibletrial.com slash popculturepodcast, you can get a free 30-day trial of Audible Premium Plus, which allows you to get one credit or two credits for Prime members. Good for any premium selection titles you like, yours to keep. And they also offer the Audible Plus catalog of podcasts, audiobooks, guided wellness, and Audible originals. Listen all you want, no credits needed. And also, at the end of your trial, a friendly email reminder before your trial ends. And, uh, yeah, it's a really great service. I listen, I I don't get a chance to listen to too many audiobooks, but I do love to listen to podcasts. I also really love the sleep sounds. I use them every single night. So I highly recommend you check out this service. It's fantastic. And, uh, once again, that link is audibletrial.com slash popculturepodcast. Now on with the review. All right. So Moon Knight episode six just dropped. So uh, it's time to review season one of Moon Knight. Let's get into it. So um, yeah, Moon Knight. I was very excited for the show, obviously. Got a poster. So I was excited to see Oscar Isaac in a Marvel role. He was in X-Men Apocalypse as Apocalypse, but completely unrecognizable there. So uh, they kind of did what Gemma, uh, they did with Gemma Chan where she was in Captain Marvel, but also she was Cersei in uh, in Eternals. But um, yeah, you have Mark Spector slash Stephen Grant. Um, you know, these two different personalities inside one body, played by Oscar Isaac brilliantly. And then you also have Mae Callumaway. Hopefully I'm saying her name right. Probably not. But um, yeah, she plays Layla. Forget her last name. I don't have it pulled up right now. Uh, we also have Ethan Hawke as Arthur Harrow, the villain of the series. And uh, that's pretty much the main cast. It's just like those three that are integral to the plot. But um, Mark, he's a mercenary. And Steven, he's a, he's a gift shop assistant or a gift shop cashier, essentially. Uh, just a British lad uh, chilling in his apartment with his goldfish, talking to his... Uh, his living statue friend, you know, those people that go out there and, you know, they don't move like living statues, but um, yeah, two very different lives and they merge together. And uh, oh yeah, there's also an ancient Egyptian God that just so happens to live inside them um, called Khonshu. And I'll be honest, I don't know like the Egyptian gods or anything like that. Um, I, I really don't know anything about Egyptian culture. I'm ignorant. So yeah, uh, none of the stuff I was like familiar with or anything like that, but I like how it kind of showed you some of their culture a little bit, just a little bit, like mainly when it comes to their, um, you know, when it comes to their history dating back to ancient times, but, um, that's, that's what most people attribute to them. But, uh, yeah, overall, I I, I like the season. Um, there wasn't any confirmation for a second season, and it's kind of sounding like there might not be one. Um, but after, and I'm not spoiling anything here, but after the that ending we got, it feels only right that we would get another one. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe we will. Maybe there will be some sort of announcement that we're getting another season of Moon Knight. I would be very happy about that. Uh, there's a lot they can still do. I haven't read any of the Moon Knight comics, but I know just from watching this series and hearing what other people have to say about it, people that have actually read the comics and know this stuff, um, there's a lot they can still do with this character. He's a really cool character. I mean, maybe they'll do a movie, but I think he's he is a little more suited for Disney+. Plus. Um, that being said, the the scope of this show when it comes to affecting the rest of the Marvel universe, I feel like it really doesn't have that much, um, that much weight carried into the rest of the MCU. I don't think any of the events that happen in the show will be that important to, 
you know, the MCU overall and their vision. But um, I still appreciate this show for what it is. Um, doing a lot of really different things when it comes to mental health and, you know, multiple personalities, I think is the, honestly, the coolest aspect of this show, just, you know, Oscar Isaac going in between these two completely different characters. Um, but yeah, he, he was great in that. Arthur Harrow, Ethan Hawke's uh, character, he had his moments, but um, not not the strongest villain for sure. I wouldn't say it's like, I don't even remember the name of the villain from Thor, The Dark World. But um, yeah, it's not as bad as that, but it's not good. I, and no shade towards Ethan Hawke. I just think out of all the villains we've had, I, I really don't know. And it's definitely not as bad as the Flag Smashers. I did not like the Flag Smashers in, uh, in what's it called? The, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I did not like those villains at all. Um, you know, what they were trying to do is really vague. And honestly, when it came to Arthur Harrow, I mean, you knew what he wanted to do, essentially. But it's just like, why? I, I mean, I get it, but like, I don't. But like, I also, I don't know. He's okay. He's really okay. I think the moments when he shines most, and I can't even get into it right now, but um, yeah, I can't get into it right now. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say in terms of non-spoilers. Um, one thing I was thinking is like, what other MCU character could be paired up with Moon Knight in a future project in general? And uh, honestly, I don't know. Could he show up in Multiverse of Madness? For those people who have already seen it, they know. But um, for me, not seeing it yet, I, I have no clue if he shows up in there. Probably not because, I mean, that's only a two hour and six movie. Uh, and two hour and six movie? Two hour and six minute movie. Um, and I heard there's a lot jam packed into that movie. So I would kind of doubt that he shows up in it, but you never know. Uh, what else could he show up in? I really don't know. Maybe like something to do with Blade. I could see that. That would be pretty cool. Um, and then Werewolf by Night, which is a new show coming out um, on Disney Plus. Or not a show, but rather um, a Halloween special, um, which that character is connected to Moon Knight in some shape, or, some way, shape, or form, I think. That's like a villain in the Moon Knight comics or something like that. I, I'm not 100% sure, but definitely potential for him to show up there. And that would be really cool. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say. I mean, the suit overall, they mostly went with CGI. Um, however, like you can see it in the, in the marketing for the show. There's two different suits. There's kind of like a more traditional suit and tie with a vest or whatever um and then you have the the actual moon knight suit with the the um the crescent emblem on there and the rags it looks more like a mummy um and the more mummyish one is is uh uh mark specter and the more you know nicely dressed one is is uh stephen grant which makes sense because he's British and the British dress very nice. Um, but yeah, um, I like both of the suits and uh, sorry, my nose is like really itchy. Um, but I have to say when it comes to the CGI, they did a lot less from what it seemed like on, uh, on Steven's costume, a little more practical. And I liked that. I kind of wanted more from that out of the more mummyish looking, uh, and I know mummy is probably isn't a word, but the more mummyish looking uh, Moon Knight outfit, which I still liked, but it's it's kind of like one of those uh, those Spider Man kind of things with the new Tom Holland movies. Um, you know, the suit just seems more CGI than anything, and I would like Marvel to go back to somewhat more practical effects, which it seems like they might be doing that with the new Guardians movie saw some set photos of some people in prosthetics and that looked really good. Um, so I applaud James Gunn for doing that. 
Good job, James Gunn. I'm very excited for Guardians and uh, hopefully a Suicide Squad sequel if the uh, your new daddy over at uh, at Discovery decides, hey, you can stick around in the DCEU. Uh, sorry, I said daddy. That was weird. It was really weird, but it's trying to be funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I really have to say about Moon Knight Season 1 in terms of non-spoilers. Um, I liked it overall. It's not my favorite, though. I, I would say maybe Loki or... or um, oh, what else? <laughs> Honestly, I, I think Loki's still my favorite. I, I mean, it's not everybody's favorite, but I just really love Tom Hiddleston and that character. So that one always stands out to me. But um, what if is pretty good for the most part? WandaVision, I like. Uh, I actually went back and rewatched a few of the episodes there. Man, that show really started off slow. But um, yeah, what were the other shows? Oh, yeah, Hawkeye. There we go. Uh, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> yeah, I, I like Hawkeye too. It was, uh, it was a, f- a refreshing change of pace. Sorry if I seem kind of, I'm not bored. I'm just tired. It's, uh, it's 4 19 a.m. <laughs> I stay up late to watch these Moon Knight episodes. Uh, but now I won't have to do that anymore. I'll just stay up late watching Modern Family or something. But um, yeah, that's all I have to say in terms of non-spoilers. For those of you watching this on YouTube, go ahead and click off the video. You're all good. No spoilers here. I, I get it. You haven't had time to watch it all yet. Um, but I hope that before all of you watch Doctor Strange, you at least watch wandavision and what if um if you haven't watched the other shows then probably not a big deal i don't know haven't seen the movie yet but those shows from what i've heard are like the most important leading into dr strange especially if you just look at the uh look at the trailers and stuff like that but um yeah on to the spoiler discussion for moon knight season one if you don't want to hear any spoilers you have already been warned so uh get your butt out of here But uh, yeah, I have some notes here on my phone. I want to talk about the sixth episode in specific uh, to start off with here, which as of recording this, I don't know if there's an official title. Uh, Let me see here. (coughs) Excuse me. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a title yet. Um, It takes a while for them to actually put that in there. Um. Yeah, it's just saying episode six, but 43 minutes, one of the shortest episodes so far out of all the Marvel Disney Plus shows in terms of the finale, that is. Uh, But let me get to my notes here. I'm the kind of note taker where I'm just like doing a play by play and I'll like rewind and stuff like that. But um, we start off. uh, We see Mark's body with the two bullets in him and some people take him out of the water that he was laying in. And uh, I noticed that there was no blood in the water. I'm just like, I get it. It's still TV 14, but I wish they would have done that. Um, You know, these, these characters are meant to be gritty and uh, you know, it is what it is, but um, Haro releases, uh, releases Amit. Uh, Layla breaks out uh, Khonshu. Khonshu goes over to Amit and is like, hey, bro, or, well, actually, Amit's a, a female. So he's like, hey, bitch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, that was mean. Um, well, you know what? Amit, Amit's, yeah, she's a bitch, whatever. Sorry, I was hearing some weird noises. Not sure what that was. But, uh, yeah, he, he confronts Amit. He's like, come on, you know what you're doing isn't cool. Let's not do this, okay? You know, that's not how Kanchu talks. Kanchu's more like, hey, I'm going to kill you and all that shit. So it's just like, Kanchu, you're not helping the situation. If we all could just, you know, talk and chill, that'd be great. Um, You know, talk it out. Talk out your feelings. I've I've been watching way too much Modern Family, okay? Um, But uh, what happens next? Uh, Mark slash Steven. uh, Well, Mark goes back to steven after the last episode where he gets all dusted or whatever but um yeah they're they're both about to get turned into dust or stone or whatever and then kanchu releases them and uh they suit up but when they get out there they're actually going back and forth between mark and steven so they're shifting between the two costumes 
I thought that was really fun, especially in the fight scenes where you have Mark actually kick, or not Mark, but you have Steven out there kicking some ass, like seriously kicking some fucking ass. Really cool fight scenes in this episode. Um, you can notice I'm a lot more excited now that I can actually talk about the spoilers. But um, he is straight kicking ass and taking names. And um, there's something that happens where like one of his... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Daredevil has them too, where it's just like batons essentially. Um, and like does a Captain America shield kind of boomerang and it comes back to him, but then it's uh then it's March suited up in the mummy-ish, the mummy-ish costume catching that thingy right there. And uh I was just like, look at that transition from them, you know. It, it's almost like they're both on the battlefield, like they are, but at the same time, like you know, they're going back and forth between them, but it's cool. It's like both of them are there simultaneously, like both kicking ass at the same time, um, if that makes sense. But I thought that was really cool. Um, and then the background, you just see Amit, like giant Amit and giant Kanchu fighting in the background with the pyramid right there. And I was just like, what an incredible shot. But um, yeah, Layla, um, is it Tar Tarwerit? Tarwet or something like that, the hippo lady. Um, she, uh, Layla becomes her avatar and she gets a badass looking suit. It's like all gold and white. And then she has these gold fucking wings, kind of like, um, kind of like Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984, but a lot cooler, in my opinion. A lot less bulky. Very sleek design. I like it. It kind of reminds me of Falcon a little bit. But um, yeah, that shit was really cool. Her costume was badass. And again, she's not a character from the comics, so this is kind of made up, but I'm also wondering if, like, this suit is inspired by another character in the comics, maybe. I don't know. Um, but let me see here what happens next. Oh, yeah, so Mark slash Steven, they completely black out while they're getting their soul sucked out by Conchu's little fucking, I don't even know what it is, you know, his, his cane, essentially, with an axe on it now and like an even cooler gator head i kind of dug it it looked pretty cool but um yeah he's about to get his soul sucked out and then he blacks out and when he comes back to he uh he has um haro's little cane axe thingy and it's just like right on his uh right on his noggin and uh He's okay, it turns out, by the end of the episode in the after credit scene. Although, um, you know, you kind of know he's okay throughout that. But you're like, is he dead? I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. But, um, yeah, Moon Knight, or not Moon Knight, but Khonshu is like, all right, Mark, we had a deal, peace out. Um, and then uh, that's pretty much that there's, there's a series of things that happen at the end of the episode where Conchu is just like all right peace out and then Steven slash Mark they wake back up and uh, they're in the hospital with doc Dr. Haro Ned Flanders and um, they're just talking to him and and uh, he starts walking away and he's bleeding from his feet like the glass in his shoes that we saw in the first episode and have been hearing throughout all the episodes when he walks um and then just a series of things happens and then steven ends back up in his apartment right back where we started um and that's pretty much it you know steven and mark are talking to each other they're both aware of each other but we're kind of in a way just back where we started but you know with different things going on and uh characters having new knowledge mainly with steven um but yeah really really interesting episode kind of lost me by the end not really knowing what they're going to do with that um i was really skeptical you know going into it and and ending the episode i was just like what are they going to do going forward i don't understand um by the end of the episode, in the after credit scene, yes, there's an after credit scene, which I forgot to mention for the non-spoiler people to be like, hey, there's an after credit scene, so stay for that. So sorry to them, but um, yeah, um, we uh, we open, and I, I wrote it down, Haro uh, wakes up in the, or not wakes up in the hospital, but he's in the hospital, spills a drink or whatever, and the nurse is like, all right, it's time for bed. 
some dude with gloves on comes over. He's speaking Spanish. And uh, uh, Haro's in a wheelchair. He's like, all right, let me take this guy. Um, he's walking him through the hospital, wheeling him through the hospital. And they keep passing by dead bodies. And uh, we get to the exit of the hospital. And there's a limo there. The license plate says Spectre. It's spelled like uh, S P K T E R, or maybe just T R, um, on both license plate front, uh, license plates, front and back. And uh, this dude, who we do not know, haven't seen yet, just heard his voice. Um, pretty much just throws Haro into this limousine, and we see Kanchu with a nice looking suit, kind of like what uh, what Steven had. So maybe he was like, all right, Steven, I don't like you very much, but you do have good style, I cannot lie. And um, Conchu's talking to him, he's like, man, Mark was like, man, if I die, you're gonna want my wife. But that's not true. Mark's a troubled dude. Or, or like, after we we do the what we need to do, I'm done with you. And he's like, well, that's not true. Mark's a troubled dude. He, in a way, he's saying he has things he doesn't even know about both Stephen and Mark. And uh, I'll get to what I think about that in a second after I finish what happens here. But he's like, meet my new friend. And, uh, you know, the limousine thing where, you know, the driver can put down that one, you know, glass pane or whatever to separate them. And uh, he rolls it down. He's like, meet my new friend, Jake Lockley. And uh, he rolls the thing down. You see, uh, you see the face of Oscar Isaac. He's got the little uh, cabbie cap on. And uh, I forget exactly what he says, but he's like, all right, so yeah, you're going to die. So he shoots Haro. And that's how we end with the after credit scene. So I'm curious to see what they do next. And now that they finally introduced Jake Lockley, which if you don't know, it's another personality. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need a drink here. I'm going to regret that, but um, yeah, Jake Lockley is another personality that Mark Spector has in the comics, and uh, he's who uh, Mark slash Steven has been blacking out and turning into, essentially, when Mark slash Steven goes berserker mode, um, which is what happened in this episode here, and the problem I have with it is, like, each time it happens, I guess they get pulled away to more important things. But at the same time, it's like we need to get the bottom to the bottom of what's going on here, because uh, we might have another personality on our hands. But um, it makes me wonder where that personality came from when we learn about his trauma in uh, in that last episode. It really makes me wonder where that came from. But. I don't know. I guess we'll have to figure it out if we get a Moon Knight season two. But uh, I certainly hope we do. That's all I have to say for Moon Knight season one slash episode five. Um, you know, I really just need to review episode five overall and not go back over all the other ones um, in terms of spoilers. But for my review, I mean, my non-spoiler review, it's pretty much the same stuff I would have said for you know the spoiler section so yeah um that's pretty much all i have to say comment down below what you thought of moon knight season one did you love it did you hate it are you in the middle i'm in the middle leaning, leaning more towards i like it um for me overall i think i'm gonna give this season a i'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10 that seems fair and accurate from for how i feel about it there's things i don't love about it but uh overall i think the good outweighs the bad it's still not one of my favorite marvel disney plus shows but it's definitely up there and um i'm i'm really excited to see what they do with it next so uh yeah that's all i got for uh for moon knight so if you're watching on youtube thanks for watching i will see you in the next one for the people listening to the podcast let's uh let's talk about dr strange